I'm going to share with you how I did a red fox blanket or throw. This finished out at about 48 inches wide and about 68 inches long. And I used 16 red fox pelts. I ran the skins so that the necks were down the center and the rumps were on the end. And then it's lined with a quilted nylon backing. So keep watching and enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you find it informative. Today's project, we're gonna be making a red fox blanket. I've got about 18 pelts from a, a trapper in Austin, Minnesota. Sometimes you'll get your pelts back from the dressers where they're open. And sometimes you'll get your, your uh, where they're open already. And sometimes you'll get your pelts back from the dressers um, cased. We got these um, back from the dressers cased. And what I do is I start by splitting the belly all the way up from the neck to the rump. I put my board in the center and then just run my center blade of my knife tip up right down the center and get that opened up. The next step is to open the paws. So I mark the center, I turn the, leave the paw turned, mark that center line of the paw, and then I split that with my fur knife to open up that paw, only on this belly side, from the belly up to the end of the paw. The next step is to mark your center back of your skin. So I lay my, my pelt out, and I start at the rump and I put in safety pins about every five or six inches all the way up to the neck to find that nice center back line. We want to keep that straight when we nail. So what I do is I take that safety pin, find it, mark it with a pen, and then the next step is turn it to the leather side and get that line uh, marked all the way from the rump to the neck. You can see I've got my paws opened on this one. And what I also like to do is go across from this sh uh, front shoulder across to this front shoulder just to make sure I get that line because when I'm going to join these up, I want to get this line with um, matching on each, each skin. I also like to mark the knot, what I'm not going to use on the bellies so I know when I nail to stay away from these real thin, I'm not going to use these white bellies. So I've got these marked out on each skin so I know what to stay away from. The next step I like to do is take the faces off. So to take the face off, what um, I recommend is you got your, your skin open, you start from the jawline here, come down, run real close to the back of each ear. Go across that ear, back across the bottom of this ear, and back up to that jawline. Tough cartilage in here sometimes, so take your time cutting, out, cutting around those ears. You want as much of that neck as you can. And once I've got that done, then what I like to do is I like to measure my skins and mark on the paw down here the length so that I can get the uh, symmetrical line up on these when I get it done. So this one measured 23, this one measured 25, and the next step we are going to do is uh, wetting and stretching after we've got your skins all repaired out. So I already did the repairs on these. I went through and checked for damages, got those sewed up. So the next will be uh, stretching, wetting and stretching. I'm getting my board ready for nailing and I can get four skins out on this board. So what I've done is marked a rectangle that is 24 inches long and 14 inches wide and I've squared that out on my um, pa paper. I also take and mark the center line and what I do is I take a staple and put it just so it just is raised up a little bit. I can feel that staple right through the um, skin when I go to nail and get my center back right on that um, staple line. 
I usually use a couple of sheets of craft paper on top of a homicot board that's about a uh, half an inch thick. So when I go to lift my skins um, that are stapled off, I just pull the paper up and it pops the staples and does really nice. So now we're going to start wetting our skins so we can get them on the board. I'm going to start wetting um, my skins so I can get them set to go on the board. So what I use is a wetting brush, um, water, and you just work your wetting brush with the water into the leather of your, your pelt. All the way down, all the way to the neck. Get it thoroughly damp. You don't want it dripping wet. You can also use a spray bottle. And then once you've got your skin all evenly wet, what you do is you fold it to the center and smooth it out and then let the water saturate into there. Um, leave it for probably about 10, 15 minutes. And you don't want to do more skins than what you can nail out in probably about a half an hour. So I'm only going to do like three or four this time. So I'm getting ready to nail these out. What I do is start at the bottom and I tack the bottom across from the center to each side. And then I go up to the neck and I start from the neck and go from the center to each side. And then I'll do my body. So you can see how nice and, and soft these got and they should stretch out and nail out quite nicely. Well I nailed these three out and got my length and got my width so actually this one turned out a little bit longer which is fine and um, I did run into a little problem. I had a spot here that I repaired and it started to split. So if that happens, just put an extra staple there so that when you can come back, keep it together and then you can repair that after you get it off the board. But yeah, worked out good. I've got my last set of three um, all dry. So now it's time to take them off the board. Before I take them off the board, I use my square and I start at the top, right at the neck, and I get nice and close, and then I square off the top from edge to edge. Then I come down on each side and square that off all the way down to the bottom of the rump. And um, I do the flip my square over, do the same on that side. So I know I've got nice square um, configuration to what I'm going to be using. Now this is, I got nine and a half to nine and three quarters. I got 110 on the width of these pelts. So I'm not going to be trimming them off yet. But if I were trimming them off, I am would, um, before I take them off the board, I would put down this um, coal tape. It's an adhesive back tape. So when I take this off the board and I go to cut, I've already got it on there. It's nice and straight. It doesn't isn't going to move on me. So it's a great time to put your cold tape on your pattern. Whether you're blocking something out square or like if I had a mitt pattern and I wanted to lay my mitt pattern and draw that on my skin, I'd put my cold tape right on. So when I took it off, it would be all set and I could just square out or cut out my um, shape that I want. So the next thing we're going to do after we get these off the board is wet glaze them. And that won't take real long. And then we're going to be making a, a pattern as to how we want to join them together and laying them out. I've got all the staples removed out of my skins now. And the next thing I do is flip them over. And I'll be wet glazing um, the hair side on this skin. So it's quite easy to do. You just take your spritz bottle with water lightly dampen the fur side start at the neck take your wire brush 
and just comb down. You're just getting all the hairs going in the right direction after you've got this completely done from the neck to the rump. What you want to do and the sides, what you want to do is let it dry. And it'll probably take, depending on humidity, 10 to 15 minutes. But you want it to dry nice before you move on to your next step. And my next step is going to be laying them out to see how I'm going to be sewing them together. I started laying out my fox pelts as how I'm going to join them up. And I do that but by what color I felt looked the best next to each other. And it's, you know, it's just a matter of playing with it until you find um, which ones you think look good next to each other. After that's done, what I do is I go on the center of the skin and I mark the number. Um, this is going to be the second one and then I put the same marking on the back on this one so that I know I've got a set. After I get my sets done, then what I do is I start um, joining them together. So I have done this, this uh, row, and I take the uh, center back, trim that edge that was on here that hadn't been trimmed yet, trim that edge, sew the center, then after I get that done and I get ready to join it up to the next row, I trim the sides. So I come down my side line and I trim that all the way to the bottom. I don't do I don't do the bottom edge until I'm completely done with the entire project and it's all blocked out for the second time. So then when I get ready to join this row to the next, what I do is I fold it together, match my match my centers, and then I start sewing from the top center line, tack it, come down right at the shoulders where you see these, um, where the hair length changes right here at the shoulder, and I match that so that that matches up really nice, tack it. And then I usually tack it maybe one more midpoint to, till I get to uh, the rump. Sometimes one skin might be a little longer than other, but we'll trim that off when we get to the bottom. Then when I start joining, what I do is I sew from the bottom up and meet all of my tack marks along the way, flip it, and do, then do the other side just like that. And... Uh, it's nice to kind of like do when it's a project this big, I usually do half of them on one side, half of them on the other side, and then join the, you know, the last set up in the middle. So it's not too much to, to work with. And uh, yeah, it's, they're, they're working out good. I'm getting ready to um, join my centers, the necks of my skins. So, as you can see here, I'm going to be joining these up the center, the center next. So, I trimmed this one, and now I'm going to trim this one. Just take your fur knife, start at the end, hold it gently, and trim on your trim line. And once I've got this done, then what I do is I match the center, tack it, and um, work to each side to get uh, it matched up. I want my pattern on my fur to meet exactly. So you take your two skins and you can see the hair length, how there's a definite pattern in this hair length. And I want to meet my tips right here and I want to meet that dark center circle on here right in the center because that's where it needs to meet even if my line is off here that's not a big deal but I want that dark center circle to match up then I start at the center
tack it. I go to this end and uh, what I can do is there's still a lot of stretch left in these hides. So I can stretch that out to meet the other, the other half. And then start at this end and you can use a tweezers or whatever, get all your hair down so it's nice tucked in there and close it up. Back to the center. Now I'm going to do the other side. So I flip it and this side actually um, matched up pretty well as far as length. So you can get those little wispy things down. And then we're going to start at the end. And get this all taken care of. It's kind of nice about fur is that you when it's um, there's no tape on it you can you can uh, work it so you can stretch it on the back side or the forward side while you sew you just hold your leather one way if this side is longer you hold it this way if the back side is longer you hold it this way and it kind of the wheels will feed it um, evenly if it's even you just hold it straight Now I've got the center done and it matches beautiful all the way down. So the next step is I'm going to be squaring the sides off in length and uh, then joining them up together. What I'm going to do next after I've got my um, necks joined up is trim my sides. So I want to leave as much as possible right at the top. And so even though my line that I drew is right here, I'm just going to leave the, ex the excess. I want that. Then I come down with my knife, go right behind the, um, right behind the leg, and then I'm at the shoulder. And what I continue to do is go um, right to just behind the shoulder. Then I turn this back and I look and I could either have marked this with pen earlier, but I don't know. I kind of like to do it on the fly. So I fold it back and what I want to do is avoid this really uh, thin area on the belly right here. So I'm going to mark that uh, or just cut that down. I know where my turn line is to the bottom and then when I sew these up it'll look great that will be you won't even see that uh, thin area because we aren't going to have it there anymore so I trim my sides then after I get my sides trimmed then um, I'll be joining this to the next row that's already on the blanket what I did was we're gonna start and put this next row on so I started from the center Back, the center where I've got my necks tacked it then I went down on the shoulder and where the hair color changed I tacked it there tacked it again um, midpoint on the belly and when I got done tacking it at the shoulder I um, tried to make my bottoms meet and the one skin was a little shy in length so I these still have a lot of stretch so I just hand stretched it a little bit to uh, get it to come out close then I tacked the bottom I started sewing this up and you always sew uh, against the hair so you always sew from the bottom up so your hair um, does not get met in that seam and trapped it'll it always gives a nicer um, finish when your hair is out of that seam as much as possible. So um, you just continue doing this all the way up. And you know, a lot of people will pin this, they'll 
use little clippies, however you want to do it. I just don't bother. I'd rather not have something to have to take out after I put it in. I like just tacking it and um, and going for the, you know, let the machine wheels hold it and get my hairs down and um, just keep working it. Now the back side on this, you can see, has got a little bit more fullness than the front. So when I sew, I'm going to um, feed that fullness in to the front side. And to do that, you just take your uh, material and you're going to pull it forward. Because what that does is it makes the back side feed in nicely to the front. And if it was um, perfectly even, then I'd hold it straight out. But this was a little bit long. And that happens, you know. These skins have a lot of stretch in them when you get them off the board. And um, it's where you just want to feed that in. You want to meet your marks. You don't want to start at the bottom and sort of the top and then end up having a big bubble right at the end. You want to feed it in and then the last nailing we do will um, get rid of all of the uh, kind of like ripples or bubbles that we've got that have come up while we've been sewing our rows together. And that's natural. That's usually the way that, the, that it goes. You're not going to usually get away with never doing that second nailing when you're working with um, especially this larger project um, and it's it finishes off and it, and it gets everything in a nice um, order when you're when you're done too so we got this half done and now we're gonna flip it around do the same thing on the other other side I've got all my skin sewed together now, and I'm getting ready for my final nailing. What's um, the situation is I'm going to have to do the nailing in two parts because it's wider and longer than my original board. So instead of running it the length, what I'm going to be doing is doing it half or like maybe about two thirds, and then I'll nail the other third later. So I'm going to be laying it on the board the width way and then wet it um, up to the edge of the board or just about let it sit for a little while and then nail out this portion after that dries I'll take it off the board and then nail the rest stay tuned well, I've got the first section um, nailed out. And so I started by dampening the skins up to um, like the fourth row. And then I turned the fur back on itself and let it sit for a little while so that water could work itself into the leather. And then I started at the center. I had my um, line drawn on my paper with my staples underneath so I could feel my staples as I walked up the center. And I did it row by row. So I started at the center and then worked um, my straight line out to the edge that I had marked on the paper on that side, straight line out to this side, and then I went up row by row. So then I did the next section from the center, nailed this out to the end, nailed that out to the end, and um, got it pretty well uh, set. So now this is going to dry. After it dries, what I'll do is take it off the board, mark it first on the edges, um, take it off the board, and then I'll continue from this line on my next uh, nailing and do the other half. So, um, but should dry, and these little ripples that are in here, they'll work themselves out as this dries, they'll draw together and it just, it'll look really good when it's done. 
this half has dried now so the next step is to um, square it off before I take it off the board so I like to use a real long um, yardstick this one's 48 inches long and um, a square so I find the center of my work and I measured it out and it ended up being where I've got 26 inches in length from the center on each side so I mark that at the bottom um, with ink with my pen and then uh, go up each side um, using my square so I get a nice straight line then the next step is to um, put cold tape on so I stop started at the corner and then pushed my put my cold tape on and I'm going to continue with that next is to take the staples out and then um, do the other half so I've got this all squared out. I measured the sides, the top, the bottom, and from the center to the middle. So I've got my marks all set on there. Turned out and it nailed out real nice. I've got my next section um, dry and I removed the staples, put my cold tape on after I squared it all out. And now I'm going to come back and take it back to the sewing machine. I had a couple little spots where um, it had opened up when I was um, nailing it. So I'm going to close those up and um, then we'll start to put the backing on. Well, I put my blanket back on the board after I completely trimmed all the edges. And next, um, what I use is, it's called China Silk. I get it from a furrier supply store. It's actually just a lightweight piece of um, probably polyester fabric. You can use a cotton, but this works nice. And of course, my fabric isn't as wide or as long as my project, so I'm going to piece it. I start at one end, pin it down, and then it'll get hand tacked down. Um, I use a, a product called Rice's Silamide size C. It's a little thicker than size A. And, um, that works real nice. And I just based it down like about an inch, inch and a quarter stitch, about two and a half to three inches apart the rows. I start at one corner and work across my rows and then up. So everything's going in the same direction as I sew. And the next step will be the lining. When I do this fabric, I always leave a uh, salvage all the way around um, what I'm going to do is, when I'm done, is I'm going to take this selvage edge and I'm going to catch that with my lining when I sew my lining to this. So it'll be nice and sturdy. The stay cloth now is on the back leather side of my blanket. I've got it completely done, basted all the way around. And the next thing I'm going to be doing is putting on the lining. So what I like to use is a pre-quilted fabric that already has a polyester type um, fiber fill, you know, in that. And I like the nylon because it doesn't drag when you go to put it across a bed and it wears well. You could buy a already quilted, you know, coverlet or bedspread or something like that for an application. Um, but I like this fabric. It comes 58 inches wide and then I just measure what I need in length and I usually keep, you know, three or four yards of it on hand at a time. It comes in brown and black. Now what I do when I sew this on is I go to the one corner, fold it back about an inch and a half, and I pin it. And what I'm going to be doing is sewing the lining the fox, and my stay cloth all at one time, all the way down. When I'm done with this edge, what I'm going to do is come back and turn it and um, pin the next edge. I'm going to be kind of doing it like a pillowcase, and I'll do my ends last. So here I'm sewing the stay cloth, the fox, and the lining together at one time. You just tuck your hair in as you go. I'm about halfway done and it's um, it goes pretty well. 
So, you know, I usually sew four or five inches at a time, go back, tuck my hair in, hold it, and nice, I get everything all at one time. Just wanted to show you how nice this um, seam turned out. Um, I've got my stay cloth, my fox, my lining, all in one, and beautiful seam. I do like using safety pins when I when I pin my work. Um, they're easy to find. They stay stuck, and I just pull them out as I go. Of course, I don't ever run over them with the machine. But, um, yeah, it works. This works out really well. I've got my blanket all laid down with the fur underneath. I pinned the edge all the way on the one side that I sewed by machine. And then what I did was you want to smooth it out and you want to get all of the air pockets out of the blanket between the layers. So I start at the one edge that I pinned, that I sewed by machine, and then I work my way all the way out to the outside edge. Pin as I go, and then what I do next is I um, trim, I trimmed off, you know, a good amount of the salvage that I had left over. And then what I do before the next step is I take my straight edge and I put it behind the fabric right next to my seam line. And then I take a piece of chalk and I drag the chalk against the straight edge right here. And that marks my fabric. And then I do hash marks in between. So it's pretty simple. This will basically be when I turn this to sew it, I'll take out some of my safety pins. I'll know where that turn line is so that when I come to sew this, I know that's where I'm going to be joining it up. So before I do that, of course, I'm going to have to take some of these safety pins out. I don't take out, I don't take all of them out, but I'm going to sew the long edge next, and then I'm going to sew one of the ends. And then I'm going to come back. I'll leave an opening in the final end of probably about, oh, 15 to 18 inches. Um, I usually don't do it in the center. I usually do it on one side. And um, then I'll turn the works in and out and uh, close up that one end by hand. I finished sewing the quilted um, nylon backing to the body of my... Uh, red fox blanket and then what I did was I went around that um, trimmed it about uh, so the salvage was probably about a little bit over an inch all the way around and then I mitered my corners so it wouldn't be quite so bulky on the corners when I go to turn it so I'm gonna be turning this inside out um, I also did leave a space of about 14 inches on the one um, end so when I turn this uh, the blanket through, you know, it, it pulled through quite easily. I gave myself enough room. And what I did was I finished this edge with a piece of girl grain ribbon. And so I'll turn that girl grain ribbon back. I'll tack it down by hand. And then um, when I close the blanket up and finish the rest of the blanket work on the um, batting side, I'll um, finish that up and show you that next. After I had the lining side turned out, the next step was to pat it flat and pin it all the way around the edge. So I pinned it all the way around the edge and then patted out all of the extra air from in between the surfaces. And then I also pinned it, you know, like going in the center lengthwise about every foot, foot and a half. What I did next was I started at the corner and I stitched all the way around the perimeter of the edge about an inch and a half away and I stayed in the grid mark of the um, quilting so it's where I hit my knot in the edge came up did a stitch 
went this way, here, there, there, jumped across, and I did that all the way around the edge. So my edge, my edge lays really nice and flat. Now what I'm gonna do is I come in about a foot from each corner and a foot from the edge, about 12 inches, 12 to 18 inches, and I do the same thing. And I'm going to quilt right this, like maybe a four square quilt around, following those stitches to the backing so that it all stays together. And it's, you won't notice it because you don't see your stitches. They're hid right in that original design mark. And this keeps everything together so that the blanket moves it as one solid system. And um, I'll show you what it looks like after I get this all done. So it took me about an hour and a half to go all the way around the edge. And I think these other, you know, quilt square things will probably take me about another 45 minutes to an hour.